So 70% of the prostate is glandular and 30% is muscle, smooth muscle. Okay. So what? What does that really mean? The glandular component is what makes the part of the semen that contains also PSA, right? That molecule that <laughs> we call a, a, a patient stimulated anxiety mo molecule, right? PSA, because it's the, the prostate biomarker that gets men really anxious and nervous when they get this test. So that's the glandular part. Then there's a, a, a muscular part. Uh, which is about 30% of the prostate. Why is that important? It's important because the, the type of muscle that's in the prostate is called a smooth muscle. So the body has three types of muscles. It has skeletal muscle, right? So these are the muscles attached to your bones that allow you to move. And those are voluntary muscles. So when you want to move your right arm, you move your right arm, no problem. You have cardiac muscle. So that's a different type of muscle of the heart that's involuntary. And then you have smooth muscles that these are the muscles around your arteries and your blood vessels, bladder and prostate. And the reason why that's also important is because when you are stressing, what happens? Your blood pressure goes up. Why? Because stress chemicals are stimulating the blood vessels. And then so the blood vessels constrict, causing an elevation in blood pressure. Blood vessels are smooth muscles. What else is smooth muscle? Prostate mu uh, muscle. So when you're stressed, you sometimes also squeeze the prostate muscles. So, so these, some, so many of these urinary symptoms that are derived from the prostate, it's not so much that the, 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 the guy has a big prostate. It's a matter of that squeezing because there's a, either excess inflammation going on in the prostate that's squeezing the urethra, that's the tube that brings on the urine and the semen, or is the smooth muscle squeezing because there's a stressful situation. So stress has an effect. And what's also stressful to the body, this is not just emotional and psychological stress, this is also physical stress. So excess sitting down, excess sitting is also stressful to the prostate. And notice, if you're a man listening, when you're sitting down for hours at a time and then you go pee, what happens? For most men, not all, but most, the urine flow is weaker, right? Because excess sitting is, is a little bit stressful to the prostate. And, and it's a result of this smooth muscle of the prostate squeezing uh, around the urethra, okay? So I want you to, next time you go to the, see the urologist, um, I want you to ask better questions. Uh, and one of the questions is, well, I may have a big prostate, but is that what's causing my urinary problems? Because you can have a small prostate and still have urinary problems, or you can have a big prostate and not have urinary problems. Okay. So that's why, so the fact that, 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 that the prostate is 30% muscular is a big deal here for the reasons that I just mentioned. All right. Um, this is just a side view, sagittal view of the prostate. So as you can see, we have uh, the bladder and then the bladder uh, right beneath the, or inferior to the bladder is the prostate. Through the prostate, you have the urethra that brings out the urine, right? So any squeezing that happens around this area will cause blockage and there will be a weaker flow. And there's many reasons why there are weak flows uh, uh, in men, okay? There's certainly, it can be a big prostate. What I'm saying is that in my experience, oftentimes it's just not. You can have a big prostate and not have uh, urinary problems, a weak stream. But it can be just tightening of this area of the prostate, of the urethra, okay? That causes 
a weak stream. If there's a lot of, if the weak stream is not addressed, then that causes backflow of urine to, into the bladder. And then eventually that starts causing problems of the bladder as well. So now you have both. You may have an underactive bladder or you may have an overactive bladder depending on the situation. Okay. The other thing that I want to mention is that this is the rectal area here, right behind the prostate. That's the rectal area. And of course, the reason why we give, we give men that wonderful exam that most men just love, sarcasm, <laughs> is when we put our, uh, uh, our index finger through the rectum to try to assess only what this area of the prostate feels like. So when a urologist is checking for the prostate th through a DRE, digital rectal exam, we're only really feeling the posterior side of the prostate. We don't have access to the anterior or the middle area, right? And from there, you're able to feel different things whether the, if the prostate is boggy or soft or hard or nodules. Nodules are like your knuckles. So when you feel your knuckles, um, that, that can signify prostate cancer or just calcium deposits in the prostate. Okay. Um, and, and, and so the, the, the main function of the prostate is to produce about 40% of the semen. Uh, that that it's produced for fertilization. And again, PSA, which is the, the, the biomarker that we test for, is also produced in the glandular part of the prostate here. Um, and that all comes out in the, in the ducts. So actually, this is another good point to mention. So the glandular part of the prostate produces semen and PSA, which comes out in the semen. And that PSA um, uh, biomarker comes out in the ducts, not in, it shouldn't be in the bloodstream. It only comes out in the ducts so that de then it's released in the semen. So PSA is a bi it's a, it's a prostate biomarker that should not be released in the bloodstream. And it's only released when there's some sort of thing going on in the prostate. Uh, there's a lot of benign reasons why PSA is released, and we're going to talk about all that later. But I just want to give you a little overview here. All right, so the normal size of the prostate is about 20 grams, is inferior to the bladder. The rectum is right behind it in the perineal membrane. Um, and this is all part of what we spoke about just a minute ago. Mm -hmm.